introduction. And... Hello, everybody. My name is Jody Samuels, and we are all here at the Elliott Wave and Fibonacci online conference because we recognize the value that these works bring to trading the markets, especially during these uncertain times. Our next speaker, Stephen Simmons, is on a dedicated mission to advance the science of Elliott Wave analysis and serve the Elliott Wave community with the best tools possible. He's also ha he also has a very impressive background. Stephen was a research analyst at Tudor Investment Corporation, where he built and managed trading systems with tens of millions in assets under management. Later, he was CTO at Ag Squared, Director of Technology at Ideal Lab, then American Towns. So with more than 30 years of success, he's a veteran in the world of quantitative finance and internet technology. Now, as the founder <clears throat> and CEO of WaveBasis, I'm pleased to say that the FX Traders Edge endorses and recommends WaveBasis as a premier Elite Wave software. At the end of his presentation, we will give you an opportunity to test drive wave basis with a very special offer. So now let me bring on Steven, the platform's oldest active customer who will show you how he uses wave basis to trade the markets. Thank you, Steven. Hello there guys. Thank you, Jody. And thank you for uh, graciously inviting me into to this event today. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Um, so let's start, let's just jump right in. Uh, who am I and what do I do? Um, you've probably heard a lot of uh, professional traders speaking and you will probably hear more. I just wanna make it clear that I, I'm not a professional trader, although um, I do uh, always have active trades somewhere or another. My primary job, my gig is running the Wave Basis company uh, as the founder and CEO and uh, I built and manage the technology. So that's what I do most of the time. But I also manage um, a traditional long-term ter long -term equity portfolio, uh, about 25 instruments in that. I also manage a long-term crypto portfolio, about 12 uh, coins there. And um, about a couple of years ago, some colleagues uh, and then friends approached me. They saw what, what I was doing with WaveBases um, and, uh, 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 put together a fund and invited me to manage it. So I manage a, a, a private crypto fund for those guys. Uh, and I also run a, a private trading group just for friends, family, and colleagues, just to keep them uh, abreast of what, what I'm seeing in the market. So that's me. Um, how, what is my approach to LA wave trading? Uh, I think um, it's important. I, I call it the down, down to earth LA wave philosophy. Um, when we're looking at charts, you know, sometimes, and even the language that we use to describe charts, you know, what is the stock market going to do? What is Bitcoin going to do? Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that humans behave in cyclical repeating patterns, just like everything else in the universe. Um, and we see this all the time uh, in, in marketing. We can, we can predict traffic. We can you know, predict in uh, Hollywood folks use uh, movies, movie screenings to understand when people are going to laugh or when they're going to get up and walk out of the movie or when they're going to cry. And obviously in politics, we, we predict human behavior all the time and, and we refer to things like cycles. Um, so when we're looking at a chart, um, it's not an arbitrary abstract quantity moving across our screens that we're trying to predict it. What we're actually doing is just trying to do what we do in so many other fields. And that is um, gain some information about what's happening and predict what's going to happen next based on what's happening. Uh, and the Alley Wave framework provides a mechanism simply for, for measuring these naturally occurring patterns. And one of the analogies I like to use is it's similar to using Alley Wave analysis to track and, and trade markets is similar to tracking a hurricane, another uh, complex natural phenomenon. You know, when we're when we're trying to figure out a hurricane's path or where it's going to land, we're constantly taking data, uh, comparing that data to past past behavior and probabilities, and making some formulation about what's going to happen next. Um, and as uh, as time has gone on, we've obviously gotten better and better at tracking and predicting hurricanes. And that's what one of the things that Wave Basis is up to, trying to make 
make this process better. Um, I trade uh, the, the technique that I use is pure Elliott wave analysis. Um, no other indicators with the exception of RSI and MACD for, um, for sanity checks, um, looking for divergences and things like that and uh, volume uh, for confirmation of for entries or, or other uh, trading decisions that I might make. Um, I rely heavily on market context for guidance. It's, this is, you know, if you're tracking any sort of natural phenomenon, um, it, it's important to zoom out to see, you know, where are we in the big picture? Um, and wave basis is, is, is designed exactly for that, that type of, uh, viewpoint, that, that type of inspection of, of the markets. Um, my overall focus is on probability, price levels, and price structure with a heavy emphasis on confluence. Uh, and we'll talk about that in, in a minute and with some examples. Okay. Uh, what is Wave Basis? It's an LA Wave charting platform with rich automation features. Um, and I guess, and, and I said, as I said, we'll see some of that in a minute. Um, it's, and so there are some common misconceptions about wave basis. You know, when you hear about automated Elliott wave analysis, some people or many people get the idea that um, it's going to do all the work for me, um, and it's meant to replace uh, properly conducted Elliott wave analysis. That's not the case. Uh, it's not uh, uh, wave basis is not designed to replace the hard work of Elliott wave analysis. It it is data driven with a focus on probabilities. We've analyzed thousands of markets and timeframes and hundreds of millions of wave counts. And it's uh, the, app, the platform itself is meant to help the analysis uh, wave, uh, I'm sorry, the LA wave analysis process flow uh, more smoothly and more accurately and much faster. Um, if you're a beginner, Wave basis is excellent to learn practical LA wave analysis. You know, there's a lot of theory there. You can read volumes of of, of things, but uh, wave basis uh, things about LA wave analysis. But wave basis helps you see that um, as you work and as you trade. Um, if you're an expert, uh, I can't think of any better way. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm heavily biased, but I can't think of any better way to practice LA wave analysis. Then with wave basis, it, it just cuts out a lot of the uh, time consuming and tedious work that typically uh, goes into it um, and also makes uh, the analysis more precise. Um, with all that said, you can probably hear that this is for uh, do it yourself traders, people who are not necessarily looking for signals, um, but are cognizant and prepared to do the hard work of becoming a, a long term successful trader. So that's wave basis. What we're going to talk about today is finding potential trading opportunities using wave basis. Um, and these are just some of the subtopics. We're going to evaluate some wave counts. Um, we're going to uh, uh, talk about high probability turning points, like support and resistance, and how to use the, the platform to find those. Um, we'll talk about the importance of alternate wave counts in, in uh, LA wave analysis in general and how to do that in wave basis. Um, and we'll look at some multiple time frame analysis, which is again another important aspect of, of being successful with LA wave analysis. Uh, and we'll look at some examples. I don't know how much time we'll have uh, by the time we get to the end of this, but I'm aiming to talk about gold, Ethereum, Netflix, and uh, the SP. So um, let's this. Okay, can you see, see my screen okay still? I switched, anybody? No, we're still seeing your presentation. We're not seeing uh, wave basis. Okay. Let me... How do I switch? Can you just move the presentation over to the screen? Yeah, let me close. Let's do this. How's that? Any Perfect. Better? Okay, great. Okay. So starting with gold, um, I'm going to work through uh, an analysis of gold and highlight some of the important features of wave basis as we go. Um, 
So we're looking at gold up from the 2015 uh, low and let's run an automatic wave count and see what we end up with. Okay, so first I'd like to talk through some of the, the things that you're seeing over here. I'd like to consider this, um, these are, I would call them gadgets. Um, and they, you know, you can move around, move them around. There's several that you can uh, can use. I won't talk about all of them today, but I like to consider this instrumentation into a wave count because they're all integrated into the action that you're seeing on the chart. So for example, here we have the waveguide. Um, and this is a great, uh, if you're still learning and, and trying to remember all the rules and, and important guidelines about each of the patterns, you have a handy reference here to look at any, any pattern that you're interested in. You see an idealized diagram and the important uh, information about the pattern. But that's also integrated into the chart. So if you ever see, uh, you know, whenever, whatever pattern you see on the chart, you can hover that over that pattern. You can see that that's the zigzag. We hover here. We have, see, that's, this is an impulse. So you can inspect, that's why I call it uh, instrumentation. You can inspect a uh, wave count and see what's going on uh, in terms of uh, which patterns you're looking at. Um, instrumental for learning. Um, next up is the next subwaves uh, gadget. And what this uh, tells us, this is at a glance, um, particularly again, if you're learning, it's, uh, I remember it took me a while to understand how to interpret a wave count. Um, the next subwave uh, gadget and the count forecast we'll talk about are designed to help make that process of learning easier. And also if you're, uh, even if you are more advanced in your, in your LA wave knowledge, this can be helpful for summarizing um, uh, what's going on in account without having to look too much into the, the details of the, 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 you know, the labeling of the count itself. Um, so look at, let's look at this count. What is this count saying? Um, looks like we have a, a one, two, three up and, we're in a, and we've completed wave four down. Um, now what uh, you can see here, this is in, an indication of if you were to enter a trade based on this count, um, you can, uh, these are listed in from highest degree to lowest degree. So we can see at the top, uh, if you were to enter a trade to try to trade that wave five, you would have a target of around 2100. You can see the, the gray box there and we can lock that on the chart. Um, uh, and other parameters here, uh, the target and the risk, you'd be risking the bottom of the four here. So you have that information right at your fingertips. You, you may be looking, and all of these are gonna be shooting for roughly the same target, it looks like. Um, uh, if you were uh, tr trying to trade this wave three from here, you can see again, the same parameters. Uh, you can just a quick way to get a sense of, uh, you know, what the risk reward looks like on a particular trade and so on and so forth. If you were looking for a shorter term trade, you might trade this wave three here and you can see what that would look like. Something like that. Um, now, this is obviously a very bullish count. Um, and what we'll talk about is how to assess and evaluate counts and compare them. Um, but uh, looking first quickly at the the count forecast. Again, this is if you're not accustomed yet, or you're still getting accustomed to looking at and assessing wave counts. The count forecast uh, is uh, a great help for um, writing out, you know, describing what's happening in the count uh, in in simple language. So it says, uh, actually, let's let's run this again because I I modified it. So we can see. from scratch okay so this is as i said at the top this is a strongly bullish wave count um you can see that um at all three degrees uh we're bullish and it, it describes that here and and talks, talks, talks a little bit more about how to interpret the wave count um so if you're inclined to be bullish uh gold right now and this wave count would tell you it's a fine time to 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 uh uh, perhaps buy. But let's look a little bit more closely at this particular wave count. So what do we have here? So this is now what I'll talk about are uh, 
these high probability turning points and um, uh, support and resistance areas. So uh, first, let's actually let's let's uh, look a little bit more closely at the internals of this wave count. So we see um, at the lowest degree here, and this is one of my one of my uh, favorite things to do with with uh, this particular tool is to uh, use the smart tools and these high probability support and resistance areas to um, to assess how assess the integrity of a, of a wave count in in historical time. So, for example, if we start at, with this wave three here, um, we can look at the, the way that this is counted up, and we can see that wave three of that little five wave move hit right where we would expect it to. Wave four did the same thing. One of the things that I'll point out is that you know, these boxes are not forward looking there. You know, we, we get the, the same calculations are done, whether it's looking into the future or looking at, at uh, information in the uh, you know, market history in the past. Um, so this is a, you know, what you're seeing with these green boxes is exactly what you would have seen if you know, it was back in uh, 2019. Um, and with that, I'll also say that these boxes are not predictions. So if you see that here, you, you know, sometimes it's another misconception. Sometimes folks are inclined to think, okay, that's a prediction. That's where, where um, uh, the software is somehow magically predicting what's gonna happen in the future. Well, that's not true at all. This is just based on probabilities. It's, you know, there's a lot of algorithms here and there's a lot of data. And this is based on uh, uh, both uh, commonly accepted uh, regions for, uh, wave, you know, waves to terminate, wave three, wave four, wave five, um, along with uh, a, a bunch of statistical analysis, we come up with these regions. And you can also see that one of the, the other things that I love about wave bases, and I, I, might, I might keep using the word love because I, I just love using this, um, uh, really. Um, you can hover and get your Fibonacci uh, levels. Uh, without having to draw Fibonacci levels. So you can see the Fibonacci's there, <coughs> excuse me, um, along with the support and resistance areas. These are called, this collection of tools is called the smart tools and wave bases. And there are uh, several others that you can have activated, fans, arcs, pitchforks, and, ch and ch channels and fibs are the ones that I keep on um, pretty much all the time. So you can see when we hover uh, the four there, we can see that we get the channel locked on. And that's a, a standard Elliott wave channel or Elliott channel, I should say. Um, so let's get that off for the time being. And back into this impulse here. Um, and we look and we can see wave five terminated right where we would have expected it to. So what this tells me uh, if as I'm assessing this overall count, that at its heart, this would be, you know, we consider we, this is referred to as the heart of the third wave, um, the third of a third of a third, um, uh, is actually textbook. You know, when we look at the wave two, the wave two is a little shallow, but as we all know, that happens sometimes. Um, this is a textbook uh, five wave progression. And what that, tends to uh, that tends to help me build confidence in the overall count so that I can work from the inside out and say, okay, that's that was great in there. What happened with this wave three? Now we can see this would have been the, the typical place statistically speaking for wave three to end, but we had a subdivision um, that naturally has the uh, effect of stretching the outer, the higher degree wave three a bit higher. And you can see it got up to almost the, the 2.618 uh, um, extension. And then what happened? Well, wave four came and wave four hit exactly where we would, you know, right in the, in the region where we'd expect it to. How about wave five? Well, wave five got up above that uh, re resistance area, but it ended, uh, I'm going to leave that on there one second. It ended where we found um, wave fives often tend to land, 
uh, if they escape the high probability zone. Again, these are just probabilities. And, and what you'll find, um, I, I should say, I should have said it before I ran this wave count, what you'll find is that very often uh, wave counts that come out of wave bases, uh, the automatic wave counts are uh, tradable or usable to, for trading uh, decision purposes. Um, as is, however, we don't recommend that. We recommend that you go through the process that I'm explaining right now to assess and compare wave counts. Uh, so uh, the wave counts that wave bases produces are not intended to be just traded uh, blindly. Um, although, you know, people do uh, uh, evidently have have found success over uh, have found success doing that, and you might find success over uh, some period of time, but it's not recommended for long term success. So assess your wave counts, use the, you know, we have you know, almost 100 years of history of how to do this, uh, use those techniques. Uh, but and you can obviously, you can see you can do it much faster with wave bases. Um, so let's, let's move forward a bit in this count. Let's get some of this off of here. So you can see a little bit better. Okay, so after the wave three, what we would, what would we have expected? We would have expected wave four to hit about there. So that's not bad. And maybe this bullish count is a solid count. Maybe this is the correct count, um, but there may be some problems. Actually, let's look, this is the, uh, this is an area of confluence that I was talking about. Um, we can see that from the wave B, we would ex have expected wave C to be about here. From the wave three, we would have expected wave four to be in this region where the uh, colored boxes overlap. This is confluence. We have multiple degrees pointing to the same uh, turning point area. Um, one of the problems we can see is this leading diagonal here. Now, this, you can get five out of this, but it's a, it's a, and often, you know, they're, Depending on how far you are willing to drill down in time time frame, you can always get a move that's a three or a five on any move. That's, that's one of the things that you have to be aware of. You, it, you have to that that sometimes there are moves that are questionable, where um, a three or five is uh, not not obvious to the eye. I, we don't recommend that you only trust your eyes, but what you're seeing should be a part of the analysis you're, that you're doing. So although it's possible to count this as a five, it really looks more like a three. So maybe this is not something we wanna bank on. Um, also, we have to look, we should look at in this count where we are in terms of where we would have expected that wave two to terminate. And we can see it's, it's a very deep wave two. It stopped before it, it invalidated, um, but it's not in a high probability area. And so it's, uh, this is, uh, you're maybe going out on a limb to take this trade. We see the same thing here, another deep wave too. Now, I wouldn't count this out because this count has to be invalidated before any other wave count is going to make sense. Um, um, and we also can see back here that deep wave twos is not anything new for gold. So. I uh, would keep an eye on this one and let's see if it invalidates. Um, now, what we have here, let's move this up, maybe it's a little easier to deal with. Um, what you get, this is called the alternate wave counts gadget. And uh, every time you run a wave count, you get several alternates. You get a, a primary count, that's the one we're looking at now, uh, and three uh, alternates. And you can see the numbers here. Um, these don't indicate probabilities. This is uh, again instrumentation into the the um, the data that the the wave counts are producing, and this is called the similarity index. So this is a way to without without looking at the chart, you can this is this is a, a similarity between the wave counts. So uh, the primary count is always going to be one hundred percent similar to itself, right? Um, then the other counts are uh, uh, varying levels of similarity to the primary count. And this is, when you, there's, there's actually information in this. If you end up with, as we have here, sort of a spread, we have, you know, this is gonna be pretty close to 
the the primary, but these two are quite different. It looks like than than the primary. Um, this, if for example, in this um, in this kind of scenario, you know, you have some work to do because there there are four valid counts that are, that according to these similarity indexes, uh, saying uh, different things. You have two bullish counts and two bearish counts. So this is you should pay attention to that. Uh, in other in in other scenarios, you might wind up with four counts that are all very similar. You have high similarity index. That's also information. You know, these are all all valid. And as determined by the, you know, the, the wave basis engine, high probability wave counts. So if you end up with four high probability wave counts that are all saying the same thing, that's something also to pay attention to. So let's look at the, the first alternate. Okay, this is one is interesting. This one is also uh, highly bullish. You can see that here, all strongly bullish wave count. Um, it has a, a little bit different structure internally here, but again, we have a wave three that but I, I'm sorry, let me back up again and, and say how this account differs from the first one we looked at the primary is that it, it's showing us we have a, a full five waves up for a wave one from the, the 2015 low. Um, and just to recall, the last count only had three up. Uh, so how do we get that five up? Well, we had a one, two, three, four, five to get our, uh, our heart. Uh, looks pretty good. And again, wave five looks okay. Nothing, nothing too much uh, comment worthy there. But what is comment worthy is we have uh, this count is showing us a completed wave two. Well, what can we say about that? Well, it looks like, well, that wasn't too bad for uh, the A equals C project projection or C equals A. Um, we still have this strange leading diagonal and the similar deep waves, waves one and two, I'm sorry, sorry similar uh, deep uh, wave twos here. But the biggest problem this count might have is that we would typically expect wave two to terminate down here. So this is from a Fibonacci perspective, a quite shallow wave two, um, like a 382 uh, retracement. Now that's not unheard of, but it's not high probability. It does happen, but uh, it doesn't happen as often as deeper wave twos that come down here. So this count, you, you know, we keep it in mind, but I would put it in my analysis toward the bottom of the pile, just on the basis of the fact that this is, shallow, this is a really shallow wave two. And I should say that, you know, in terms of risk reward, it's not a bad trade from here, <laughs> whether, you're, whether you're looking at, uh, looking at the, the terminated wave three, or, I'm sorry, wave four or the terminated wave two. Um, uh, could take a flyer there. I'm not, but uh, it's a possibility. Um, now let's look at the uh, ones that differ a bit. This is, we have uh, similar to the first one, we have the same internal structure getting up to uh, three waves up. Um, and then we have an incomplete wave four. And so we can see we're sort of dancing around. We've been dancing around in that support area for a long time. And uh, this is, uh, uh, more acceptable, I'd say, from a, a visual standpoint, this is the three, three waves up, uh, seems more likely. Um, it's a high wave B, and what, what we ex tend to expect from a high wave B is a, a flat. Um, so we'd expect, oops, wrong one. I'm fat fingering here. Let's get uh, just the support. Okay. So we would, uh, based on this count, we would expect um, gold to finish the wave four. And let's put that on the chart so we can see it. Well, before I do that, um, the, the wave four to terminate down here. But what, what about this? What do, what do we see going on here? Um, I'd like to get a little bit, little bit more detail on that or maybe somewhat more options. Um, let's see, what's the best way? So I don't have to read, no, I'll just recalculate. Um, what we can do from here is count the subwaves of that section to see if we can make uh, further sense of it. Okay, and what we have, what do we have here? Okay. Um, actually, let me just take one step back. Bear with me. This, this is important to see. Uh, no, well, 
uh, now let's go from here. Um, so what this is showing is we have, have five waves down and it's a pretty clean five waves down with wave five ending where you would ex have expected it to. Uh, you can see in the yellow spot there. Um, then we have uh, wave A, B projecting to a C. That's the A equals C area there. Looks like it's gonna be short because we would expect wave two, if this, is a, if, if this is the beginning of a longer wave C down, um, it could look something like that. Um, now, would we get a longer wave C down for wave four? It's possible, uh, but this projects considerably lower. I mean, we can see how it, where, where that would project. That would project down to about 1300 for the wave C. Let me put that on the chart just so you have a better sense. It wouldn't be here in the expected flat support. It would be down down here based on this, this completed five down. Um, now that's gonna be a, a very deep wave four, it, but this is something we have to be uh, on alert for. Uh, in my mind, uh, this is this the way I tend to prioritize uh, alternates is in, in terms of, I guess, well, which one do I have to worry about first? Um, so if I'm thinking, if I'm in the mind to get in somewhere long, I, you know, I, I personally am, I've been waiting for this nastiness to finish for a long time. So now I'm on alert for, is it, is it about to finish here or do we still have more of a slog? Um, so in my mind, I also should say that in, in my uh, portfolio, I do have um, uh, several metals and miners positions that, that uh, make what happens in gold important. Um, so if, if we are intending to complete this deeper C, well, that might happen, um, but I don't have to worry about that just yet. I, right now I'm worried about if this is going to hold. Um, so I'm trying, I won't go into further, I won't drill down into this one and we'll look at some drilling down a little bit later. Um, but that's the, the, my current thought process on gold. Could get about, well, we could get this, you know, one of these bullish counts to rocket from here more, uh, sorry, I'm getting a call. Um, uh, more likely we have a little further or maybe a lot further to, to drop. Uh, let's go back. And let me, um, with the alternate wave counts, let's get some of this out of here so it's easier to see. Let's see. Oh, no, we can look at these alternates. You, as similar to full counts, you get alternates on the subwave count. So we counted forward this section here. In one case, we have uh, five down and we're uh, still heading up in wave two. Here, this is a, a shallow wave two. Maybe wave two is already done. Uh, something similar, This, in this case, it's a, a diagonal uh, coming down. You can see that when I hover there, you know, a little pop up there. Uh, the, the first one was, was an impulse, you can see that. Uh, and this one, again, the diagonal with the completed wave too. So we have uh, a pretty good frame of reference here for how we're, how we're currently dropping in this uh, expected wave C. Now let's go back to the, the original counts here. Okay, so we've looked at these first three. We have a completed four, a completed two, an incomplete four, and an incomplete two. Now this one might better explain a deep drop. So if, again, if I recount this, we may be heading down, this, this is a, could be a, a, a make potentially a diagonal the way it's, it's structured here because the wave three hit about where we would have expected it to. Um, or it could be one of the, the other, uh, the sub, sub wave counts that I did as we make our way down to this support area or lower, uh, again, pro projecting this, the, the wave one that I showed on the previous chart uh, gave us a target of around 1300. We can see 1300 is around the 786 for, for gold. And as we've seen, we, we can get deep wave twos for gold. 
Um, so these are the, the possibilities that uh, are in the forefront of my mind. And as I said, I'll go through them. Uh, I'll continue to track this count and I'll go through these uh, possibilities uh, in order of which ones I need to worry about first. Right now, this one is what we have to worry about that we've already completed for and we're about to launch. So let's see what happens. Um, okay, that's gold. Let me make sure that I just, there's something else I wanted to say on the gold chart. Bear with me a second. Uh, guys, Mark Tools. No, that does it. Okay. So let's take a look at. I uh, hope that's helpful. This, you know, it gives, gives hopefully some information about what, you know, what's what uh, we see in gold or what I'm seeing in gold and how to, to use wave bases to get a handle on it. Um, let's take a look at Ethereum. Now the the question on my mind and maybe a lot of people's minds was is was the low back in uh, this past June a long term bottom or and at which would imply that we're now rallying back to join the trend the uptrend the alternatively this bottom this this low may not have been the bottom and we're now rally, rallying in a corrective rally setting up to drop to new lows. Um, so let's take a look at what, what do we get uh, by running a wave count. And one of the, I point out, you see this blue dot here. Uh, uh, wave basis is smart about finding, uh, helping you find uh, starting points. Uh, if you don't know already, uh, just be emphatic about how important the starting point is uh, for any wave count. Um, and there's an article on our blog about this because it, it, it is so important that uh, especially when you're learning, it can be hard to figure out where do you start a wave count? Well, should I, you know, should I start there where the blue dot is? Should I, should I start my wave count there? Uh, in this case, uh, we always want to start a wave count um, uh, at a meaningful uh, turning point, given the time frame that you're looking at. So on a four hour chart, um, that low is the most meaningful, most recent turning point that, that I'm going to be interested in right now. So Let's uh, take a look at the wave counts. Okay. Now, working through the, the same the similar process, we see we have a pretty well structured um, five wave move up. Wave three hit right where we'd have expected it to. Uh, same thing on wave four. And I have, uh, I'll just say that I, I've, I've traded this all the way up. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a forever crypto bull. So I look for any, <laughs> any chance I can to buy it, buy some. Um, so I started trading this on the first pullback here. And then I went again, another, because I'm just like gold, have this deep uh, subdivision wave too. Um, and a funny little sort of anecdote is on this day here, uh, was actually on a call with Jody with a five minute chart up while we were talking. I was waiting for this to, I was waiting for it. Uh, you can see the confluence here uh, for wave C and for wave four. I was actually waiting for this and, and uh, looking for a place to, to jump in. Um, and sure enough, I found it um, and then traded it the rest of the way up. And how did I know uh, where to, uh, peel out of the, the new long that I took here um, because wave basis told me where the highest probability stopping point for wave five is gonna be. So I got out. Um, at that point, and we, we talked about this about a month ago. Um, I, I also spoke about uh, to, a, to a group uh, alongside Jody um, about uh, Ethereum. And at that time we just started dropping off here and I was I had gotten out of gotten out of these, these, uh, these positions. And, I was expecting a drop to around uh, 1300, those ballpark. And we can see why um, based on this wave count. Uh, calls, calls, calls. Uh, based on this wave count, we would expect uh, the wave two. So we have a completed five wave move up. Uh, and I should say, incidentally, in the context of the, uh, the thesis or the, the question was, the June low, a, a long-term bottom, and, and are we now moving up in an uptrend? Well, based on this count, you know, we can see wave two, you know, it's again, another textbook five-wave progression. This is, you know, 
Elliot himself would be smiling. Um, <coughs> excuse me. In in terms of uh, challenging or um, evaluating that 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 thesis, we're in good shape. We have what appears to be a solid, again, textbook five wave move up. So we are um, trained uh, to expect wave two to uh, end up down here somewhere. Um, now, where where do, what do we have in this particular count? This count is showing um, a completed wave two. Now, this is a little, it's, it's, a, it's in, the, in the range that we would expect, but it's a little, little on the shallow side, particularly for my taste, you know, I'd like to see it deeper into the, the um, support area. Um, gives a little bit, tends to give a little bit more confidence. So I'm not jumping at this count just yet. Um, we can see that wave, wave uh, C uh, stopped around the six, uh, 618 um, extension. Um, but again, that 100% tends to have a magnet on it um, for wave Cs. Uh, uh, probably a lot of people, the presenters here have experienced that. Um, so based on this count, and you can see it is uh, spelled out here, just like every other count, um, uh, we would be getting, uh, considering getting long uh, to go up in a, in a wave three. Um, but hold your horses, let's look at some other alternatives. We have here, now that's quite interesting. We have, uh, looks like three up with a completed four. Now that's a deep four, still not, not a terrible place for a wave four to terminate. Um, got back to that, the 100% extension. Um, but again, not quite sure. This is not the prettiest correction. I, I'm, I'm inclined to consider, continue looking at alternates. Um, cause I, uh, in my experience, we're going to get a deeper, this looks like it's more in, in my experience, this is, I would prefer this count because it has so, so much internal consistency as for, as a five wave move. Um, but it's a little unsatisfying again, because it's kind of shallow. Um, so let's look at the last one. Now, this looks like something maybe I can get behind. Again, we have our, our consistency five waves up. Um, we've got what uh, to the eye looks like a clean five wave down for wave A. Now it's a deep wave A, but um, uh, that's okay. Now, what does this count imply? Uh, and I should say, my, this is currently my um, my prime my primary count. Uh, this is the one I'm tracking. Um, and what I would like to point out with this is that we have four different counts here, right? But all of them, and they're quite different counts, but all of them show an immediately bullish scenario. Either we're heading up in a wave three here, we're heading up in a wave three here. Again, wave three, or we're heading up in a wave C. So we have four different counts, but if you are had of a mind, uh, and we'll see what I do when I, <laughs> when I finish this this presentation. If you are of a mind, uh, this might not be a bad place to take along, um, uh, because the four highest probability wave counts are all short term bullish, although they have different longer term, higher degree um, overall forecasts. So in this case, so again, let's take this as, as my prim primary. I may actually trade this, this C because I think it's gonna go um, high enough to get a little bite out of. Um, we would expect wave B to complete around there and let's project that forward. So we'd expect wave B to be up in this area around 1800 um, and then drop to wave C around 1250, 1250, 1300. Right. Um, we can expect the ABC to terminate right there. So on this, uh, this is my current perspective on, on Ether, Ethereum, and looking for two areas of confluence, around 1800 for the top of, top of uh, wave B, and then uh, around 1300, 1250, 1300 to, to complete the wave two. Um, this is where I am. Uh, we'll see how we do. 
Um, but again, uh, although this is my primary preferred wave count, uh, I'm still mindful of the others. And I have to keep those in mind as uh, the market moves forward and tells me what's going on. Again, tracking a hurricane. You know, I'm not committed to, to Louisiana or Houston yet, um, just uh, tracking it. Um, so that is, um, that was, was one to just, again, um, highlight that what's interesting about this particular count is we have uh, four different counts, quite different counts with uh, the same uh, short-term forecast. And that is, again, very useful information. Um, so let's take a look at, looks like I'm not, may not get to all of these markets, but let's take a look at uh, Netflix. And this is one that I have been uh, tracking for a while, so I'm not gonna run a fresh count. I'll just show you what's going on here in my scratch, you know, this is just my work area. Um, and I'll note just sort of anecdotally that uh, back when, uh, toward the beginning of the year when Netflix and everything else started dropping off, um, I eyeballed, you know, just thumb in the wind. You know, it looks like, you know, this is coming down hard. It looks like a lot of stuff is gonna be coming down hard. Sentiment's gonna be bearish. And I don't see this recovering before the, the 786. Um, so as we see, we've gotten down to, you can uh, see it here, this, the, the, uh, the white gray, it's a 786 right in there. You can maybe see that a little bit better. We got down here, um, we completed a wave A and a, and a, a short B, short, a, a, a short or a shallow corrective rally here is not unexpected given you know, how hard it was dropping. Um, and then let's, I'm not to maybe hide some of this so we can see a little bit better uh, the green. Um, we have, uh, looks like we completed three down. And from that three down, we would, would have expected a uh, wave four to bounce up to the 250 area. And I was expecting that and was, and, plan, and you know, as they say, plan your, uh, plan your trade and trade your plan. I was planning to short from that when we got up there. Um, and what we can see, I'll turn that off altogether. We can zoom into that a little bit further. We can see that uh, on the um, the corrective rally here, zigzag. We got uh, for the wave C. We got a nice, healthy one, two, three, four, five up, and got a beautiful confluence for where we would have expected wave five from that wave four right in here and that got me short. Um, and what I was doing here on the right um, is I, I, you know, I was tracking this in real, you know, and, and not as much as real time as you need to on a 60 minute chart, but uh, just looking at the, the, the lower degrees and the, the tiny little squiggles here to refine where I, I got that, did that short. And I did it, I think this was a Monday here, um, got it on the right time. So I'm short Netflix and I'm looking to actually uh, add to it um, because I am expecting continued drop to the, the 150 area here at minimum. Um, so what we can do here, let's, uh, what I like to do is, um, uh, yeah, let's put this on a 60. This is a drill down. So what I'm going to do here is drill down. I want to, I want to, because I said, as I, as I said, I'm looking for, uh, we've dropped here since, since I did my short, I'm looking for a, a bounce to do it again. Basically, I'm looking for five, try to try to get, see, uh, see if I can find a, a five wave move down as ugly as this looks for now, uh, and then get a bounce. Um, so let's take a look at what has happened since this drop started. Uh, let's get a little bit. So we can see that here. So far, they're coming down. It's possible that we already got that uh, that wave two bounce that I'm looking for, but it was a shallow one, um, which would tend to foretell we're about to drop very hard in wave three. Um, but this is not my primary. Let's see what else we have in our alternates. Similar count. There's a diagonal down. 
So I don't really like any of these counts, to be honest. Now let's try to get a little bit more detail. Let's look at a one hour chart. So maybe there's some, something going on that we're missing in the two hour count. Similar, that shallow wave two is, keeps making an appearance. Now here's one that's a little more interesting. Um, we have uh, completed four waves down and part of uh, presumably part of five. Now, how does this, again, same process, how does this hold up according to the probabilities? Well, boom, wave three hit exactly where we would have, uh, pretty much, not exactly, but lets you know where the high probability region is. So you're gonna start getting some support there. Um, wave four, high wave four, I guess it's worthwhile looking at wave two that, that got to about where we would have expected it to. And now we've gone a little bit uh, whipsaw-y here, uh, trying to complete the five. Now, according to uh, this support area, we would, ex would, would have expected wave five to finish around there. Um, I actually, I just want to point out that what I'm showing here now is, as, is uh, how to use wave bases to look at multiple time frames. I tend to, uh, there are multiple, uh, a bunch of different chart layouts. I tend to like mine side by side, but you can arrange them uh, according to uh, like that, according to uh, many different layouts. Um, and I find it useful to keep, as I said at the, at the top in, in, in the introduction, um, keep the higher degree, higher time frame wave count context in mind. So I like to see, you know, some not always. It depends on the trade, depends on the market, depends on the situation. But very often, I, I like to see them side by side here in a in a drilled down uh, uh, fashion, so that I can see that okay, we're still coming off of this wave four, trying to get to five. This is how we got up there, and this is what's happening now. Um, um, Let's see, ah, what, what, what else is uh, interesting to do here? So I am, as I said, bearish Netflix to 150, uh, but let's say maybe, maybe that drop is already finished. So let's see, maybe down here, that's the end of it. And now we're starting up in a, in a new Netflix bull market. Um, and some people believe that. Um, so let's test that hypothesis. If we were now heading up from this low, from this, uh, was it 162.71 low? You can see that here. How would we look? So this is, I find it always useful to, particularly in situations where it's not clear, and particularly in situations where you think you've got three up, um, and it looks like a pretty solid three up, um, but that could always turn into five up. So what would that look like? This is what it would look like. Um, so from here, if you are of the mind to be uh, bullish Netflix, which I'm not, uh, you would be expecting wave five to get up to about 280, 275. Um, and let's see, there, there may be other, look, well, we may, be, we may be unwinding in a, in a larger, uh, higher degree wave three. So again, important to keep in mind alternate wave counts uh, and important in certain situations to keep in mind the opposite wave count. Um, so um, let's see, well, I, actually one other thing I wanted to mention, I, you know, I, I've been remiss in watching the chat. I'm sorry, I should have been paying attention for uh, any questions. Um, but so if anybody, if people have asked questions, maybe somebody can help me, Jody, or somebody can <laughs> pump me some questions. Um, where is the chat? Here yeah, no, there's just one question. Um, okay. The WXYs, if you can, if you have that. Uh, you okay, it's, it's funny. If somebody always asks that question. I should, uh, I'm going to write a blog article soon about this. Um, uh, before I answer that question, one other thing I wanted to point out is, um, uh, wave basis does include a wave scanner. Um, so you can scan for wave setups. Um, you can choose the, the, the L8 wave setups that you're interested in, enter a bunch of symbols, you have uh, uh, ways to define the time frame and lots of filters to uh, customize what you're looking for. Um, yes, the wave basis, the engine does um, detect 
um, complex correctives, that's WXY, um, they are currently disabled for automatic wave counts. Um, however, with that said, you can uh, plot uh, WXYs at, at manually if you like. You can see that here. Um, now, there's a it's sort of a long story why they're disabled in the um, the currently disabled in the engine, and maybe that will change if enough people um, build a case that it should should change. Um, but in our research, we have uh, come to the conclusion that the WXY, the complex correctives, don't add anything to trading. Uh, they are st statistically uh, unreliable. There's, they are insignificant. Um, and you know, one way to think about it is if you only look for WXYs, every move every, on every chart on every time frame can be counted that way. There's just no information. It's noise from a statistical standpoint. So, um, if somebody can, like I said, if anybody has, uh, we're open. We're, you know, this is, we're at first a, a research shop, so we're always interested in, in uh, new ideas. Um, but um, so far, WXYs have not made it into the platform and we have strong reasons for that well but i personally I like to keep it simple with the abc's <laughs> yeah yeah it just doesn't add anything and you know i'm a strong proponent of occam's razor um you can simplify something you should um awesome oscillator people keep asking for this jody <laughs> well that's why we're gonna talk we're going to talk <laughs> to see right. if we can integrate the wavy tunnel in the wave basis not yeah. now but maybe in the future and that includes the yeah. awesome oscillator yeah that's right yeah jody and i are um in hot pursuit of each other so we'll see <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe maybe the awesome oscillator will make it onto wave basis or something that's right that's right yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you um, want to do the yeah the S and P now? Okay. Yeah, we have a couple of minutes. It's it's in here. Let's take a look. Um, so um, this is a pretty common count, I think, uh, among the LA Wave community. Um, we are. I'm counting the move down from the top, as you can see here, as a, a leading diagonal, and we have a bounce back to where we would have expected wave two or wave B to um, terminate. Um, you know, another thing that I, I look at uh, when I'm looking for wave C, um, you can see here, this is a little out of the way. You can see here that the where that upper uh, resistance area is is the where C would equal equal A. Um, but further up is where you know the move continued past that area. Um, when I'm tracking what I'm thinking is a wave C, I look, uh, and this is not just in my mind, this comes from the, not the research. Um, I look for that 200% extension. If a wave C gets past the 200 extension, I would consider that outlier territory, statistically speaking, for a wave C. So it, it triggers triggers us or me to start thinking about possibly a wave C. I'm sorry, wave three rather than a wave C. Uh, it does, wave C can get out over the 200, even out to the two, two, 618 sometimes, but it's rare. Uh, usually if you're getting that far out, you're, you, you might do well to start thinking about uh, a wave wave three. Um, so coming down from there. So at this point, we don't know yet uh, whether we're coming down in a, a wave C or wave two, uh, wave three. Um, we can label that as an alternate. I think I'm of the mind that uh, we're coming down in a wave three. Um, so what we have here on the right is what does the move down from this uh, 43.27? This is a, this is the SP futures. 43.2750 high, um, and have we have that here. Let's clean this up a little bit. I'm going to run out of time. Looks like we have uh, a three that stopped right where we would have expected it to, statistically speaking. Four, did pretty much the same thing. And now we're down here trying to finish this five around 3,800 or so. Um, so my current expectation, and similar to Netflix, my current expectation is that this is going to complete in some sort of ending diagonal or something down here. I'm not going to trade it, trade it until there's more clarity. This is, you know, a common expression in LA, the other wave world is wait for more clarity to emerge. I'm not a scalper, so I'm not going to get in here and mix it up with these guys. I'm going to wait for a little bit more clarity. Um, <coughs> excuse me. 
So I would expect from here, um, you know, this to finish down here and then to bounce back for a wave two here and then sell off to get us down here. Sound good? Sounds good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great presentation.